Good evening and welcome to the shop. My name's Jamie. So I picked up this stare at last word a dial test indicator on eBay not that long ago. Just under a hundred bucks for the whole set. A uh, great little tool, measures down to five tenths uh, and that's way more than I am going to be uh, using with the tools that I have and with the skills that I have right now, which are novice, novice level. So, but, so I have this tool, but right now I can't use it because I don't have a way of uh, holding it um, into the various positions that I need. So I've got a great tool, can't yet uh, use it. It has a number of attachments. The one that I'm going to be looking at today is, um, and uh, there's a number of attachments here. There's another great video out there that walks through the 7-Eleven uh, stare at and all the different things it does. And that was very helpful for me to, to find out about this guy, this little hat you can kind of screw on. And then this, once you get it down nice and tight, this shaft here, you can then mount that on a, um, an indicator holder. And then you can you know use it as you need to. Um, you could also indicate it on um, one of these guys, names escaping me. And uh, but with my primary goal here uh, tonight is to take this last word and mount it here uh, with this Noga arm. And if you haven't used a Noga arm before, it's eighty nine dollars on Amazon that you won't spend any better way. It move it in any position, tighten it down, and it holds itself right there. Um, you can you can fight. You can fight with the with the Harbor Freight one um, all you want. This is $19.99, and I'm glad I bought it because now I know that I'd really hate it. And um, instead, again, the 90 bucks that you spent um, on this will will pay for itself in enjoyment um, over and over again. Put it in any position, you can tighten it up. Um, there's other types. This one has. Um, what's called the fine adjustment here on the top, whereas you um, you turn this, it makes it ever so subtle. So if you're really trying to dial something in, there's others, uh, Noga arms that have the dial, um, sorry, the fine tuning on the bottom. Um, the one that I've picked up here on Amazon, it had it on the top. So it's a great tool. Let me just pop off this. This is the, this is a, a one thing that pretty cheap, Great to have a bunch of these um, dial indicators um, so that you can, you know, if they get damaged or if they get hot chips on them, it's pretty easy to, uh, to replace. So I've got a few of those that I work with next to the lathe. Um, but what I need to do here is I need to find a way that I can mount uh, the last word here to the Noga arm. And the two holes that are here just aren't uh, aren't the right size. So they're just too big uh, for me to use this. And so my plan is to make a brass uh, sleeve that I can use for this um, and slide it in, tighten it up, and then I can use this indicator uh, wherever I need to. All right, so here's my plan. So looking at the the Noga arm, what we're want to do here is I want to use this small, I want to use the small hole as uh, where I'll be um, inserting uh, the last word. So quick, easy way to get that measurement is I've got a, a set of punches here and I can find one that fits nicely right in there and that is 5 sixteenths. Yep, so that's the 5 16th size. And then taking a look here, this uh, last word, the diameter of this is 187. 
1987, measured it twice, got the same dimension, so that's great. And then, so my plan is to use this brass. Uh, we'll chuck it up, uh, bring it down to the 5 sixteenths outside dimension. Actually, we'll probably, um, we'll probably drill it out first to this uh, 0.87 test to make sure that this uh, fits in snugly. Then we'll uh, go ahead and bring this down to 5 sixteenths and probably leave a little bit of a, a hat on it uh, so it doesn't slide right through when I go to put this in. And then if we're lucky, we'll put a little slice in it too so that it uh, squeezes in as the... Uh, Noga arm tightens down. So I've made some progress. It's taken a while. Remember my first time doing this stuff. So I've made the bushing. I sliced it. And then it was too loose uh, on here. 
And then, so I brought it to the vise to squeeze it back together again, and I squeezed it a bit too much. So, we're going to take this punch, it's 3 16 and push him through there. stretch out that bushing a little bit. And then see if we can get it to get it to go. And yep, now it's stuck on here, which is what I would have expected. All right, so I got it off. I ended up taking the uh, transfer punch, pushing it all the way to the end, and then with a smaller punch, kind of pushing it through. And it looked like that opened up that slit just enough. So now I have a much nicer fit here. And then when I bring it over for the arm, it goes in nice and tighten it up and it's not moving. So there it is. That took a while, but I'm very happy with the results. Now I can start to measure with a little bit more accuracy. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I know for me, I've just gained an, uh, another tool in the arsenal and I'll be using that on my next project uh, when we're truing up the drive pulley on the surface grinder. So again, check out the Noga. I've got a link in my description uh, below. It's a great tool. It's just amazing how well it works. Um, and I look forward to, uh, to using it in my next project. Well, thanks for hanging in there. Um, I'll be putting out some more videos. So if you wanna get alerted when they come in, just uh, subscribe and, and uh, give me a like if you don't mind, and that'll help more people see these uh, hopefully helpful videos. Thanks.